Welcome back to the Express at the Museum of Vancouver for Sweater Lodge Unlatched. Now this new exhibit showcases the paradox of our West Coast love of nature and our culture of mass consumption. And we have more on that story coming up. But right now it's a story of love and survival from the Royal Columbian Hospital in New Westminster. Ah! Ah! Buried Alive. It's a horror Ryan Reynolds played out in this Hollywood thriller. But there is no glorifying a similar situation for Curtis Zanussi. Here's a picture of the aftermath. Curtis being flown into Royal Columbian Hospital clinging to life. That was something I'd never experienced and I knew that it was bad and they needed to get in there right now. He was working inside a trench at a construction site in Surrey when it collapsed. Two tons of sand filled the hole, burying him to the neck and crushing his body. And I was kind of in and out. I talked to a guy, that was one of the, my co-workers that was there, he was also a friend, and he said, I look dead. He was rushed to the critical care unit. To protect Curtis from going into shock, the trauma team placed him in a coma. From there, he underwent numerous surgeries. I had some broken ribs, collapsed lung, and um, my pelvis was shattered. So that was, that was the main thing, uh, trying to stabilize my pelvis because it was basically blown to pieces. The recovery was a long one. It was weeks before Curtis could breathe without a ventilator and speak. But when he could, one of his first words was to his girlfriend, who was there through it all. He proposed to me in um, the orthopedic wards. It was a no-brainer. I knew I would say yes, and um, whatever we had ahead of us, um, we would work through together. Today, Curtis is 100% and considers himself living proof of how important critical care services are. Been able to move on and go back to school and marry the love of my life, Carrie. He's speaking at the launch of the Royal Columbian Hospital Foundation's Vacation Home Lottery, a venture to raise money to go toward equipment and programs for the hospital. Somebody, I think, close to you or, or within your circle will eventually need these resources. Resources that will help others critically injured walk away like Curtis did. I'm Tim Chung in New Westminster for The Express. The website is bcvacationhomelottery.com and there are three luxury homes up for grabs. The final prize draws happen at the end of April. You're watching The Express and it's time now to put your dancing shoes on because the hot salsa dance zone has taken over Coquitlam. <laughs> The sizzling sounds of Latin beats and the quick shuffles of partners across the dance floor means for one thing. This is Salsa Dance. Made recently popular on shows like Dancing with the Stars, Salsa Dance is back in high demand. And there's one group bringing it right into our own backyard. Two, three, back a step, six, seven, forward, left, be together. Alberto Gonzalez is part of Hot Salsa Dance Zone, a fun high-energy series of dance classes held at various venues, including Coquitlam's Evergreen Cultural Center. The classes are for all levels, no matter your background or experience. Sometimes people see that salsa dancing is very difficult to do because it's intimidating to try to move like the Latin American people do when they dance. So we slowly help them not only doing the dance steps but also the teaching the dance movement and they enjoy each other while they're dancing. I also find that uh, it's fun for them not only the dance itself but it's a great way to exercise and to communicate and socialize together. A couple of basics, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Alberto's easy to follow teaching style encouraged me to try the class. We first learned the basic steps on our own, then it was time to partner up. One, two, three, four, five, six, again. My partner Raul happened to be the oldest member of the class, and he had some great advice to those thinking it's too late to salsa. Try to learn, you only live once, so why not? Why not get the exercise in? And I think it's a great, great thing to do for, uh, for your body and soul. And I can do it, they can do it too. That advice was shared by all the participants. 
that they really shouldn't be intimidated. I mean, it's one of those nice, fun dances. All the Latin dances are really what I would call party dances, and they're meant to enjoy. So come out and have fun, and people are very nice and accepting, and it's not like you're going to be made fun of, so come out and try it. Alberto, I just finished your dance lesson with Hot Salsa Dance on Salsa class. This is an amazing class, but now I want to know how I can become a better salsa dancer. Do you have any tips for me? Yes, definitely. Let's go right into it. Okay. okay. The first thing you need to do, always connect with your partner, look at each other, always maintain at the front, and you want to respond just after me, small little step behind. With a little help and encouragement, Alberto slowly crafted us into dancers. Learning how to salsa dance, I'm Mona Mansour in Coquitlam for The Express. Salsa Dance Zone offers classes all around the Lower Mainland, so if you'd like to shake it with Alberto, you can go to the website for details. You're watching The Express, and we have more stories that are uniquely BC coming up. Up next on The Express. So we're inviting uh, visitors to take some fleece home with them and to make something interesting. Sweater Lodge unlatched at the Museum of Vancouver. The General Store at the Burnaby Village Museum. The Express. This is your local voice. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by Hairstyling and color services for Shaw TV provided by The Lounge Hair Studio, loungehairstudio.com. In war, children are the innocent casualties. Playground Builders creates play and hope for these innocent children. We do this by empowering locals. We create badly needed jobs to build safe playgrounds. This allows children to do what children are supposed to do, build childhoods. We cannot change the past, but we can influence the future. You can help too. Go to playgroundbuilders.org. Thank you. Almost four and a half million Canadians live with arthritis. It's a leading cause of pain and disability. Arthritis strikes young and old alike, and the burden of illness takes an enormous toll. The Canadian Arthritis Network is a not-for-profit organization that funds research and connects today's players in arthritis research. We're all working together so that today's arthritis research becomes tomorrow's cure. For more information, please visit arthritisnetwork.ca. Welcome back to The Express, the Museum of Vancouver for Sweater Lodge Unlatched, where we're learning about the many things you can do with polar fleece. Yes. When we made Sweater Lodge, we actually had a fair bit of fabric left over, and so we really wanted to incorporate it into this exhibit. Uh, so we're inviting uh, visitors to take some fleece home with them and to make something interesting, make something surprising, and uh, photograph it and send it back to the Museum of Vancouver's Flickr site, and uh, they'll download it and add it to the exhibition wall. I love this here, and this is your partner, is it? Yes, it's yeah. Giant bow on the head, it's very funny. And I recognize this face. Oh, uh, yeah, I, um, I'm a little bit lazy. I just resorted to some fleece and duct tape and Photoshop. I think it's great. I like this stuff that, well, this one here especially because it's a dress and then incorporating the pop bottles again, so really bringing it all back together. That was wonderful. That's actually uh, Mari Fujita. She's one of the architecture professors at the School of Architecture at UBC, and she's also written the essay that accompanies the exhibition. Okay, I have no idea what I'm going to do with mine, so that's it. You think you're lazy. <laughs> Sweater Lodge Unlatched runs until May 1st here at the Museum of Vancouver. And besides getting involved by creating your own custom piece, you can also join curator talks and tours and an evening of lullabies for adults with local artist Veda Hilly. Now on the Express, it's time for a history lesson at the Burnaby Village Museum. I have no idea what I'm going to make. My name is Jean and I work here at the General Store at the Burnaby Village Museum. Here at the general store, we have dry goods, we have groceries, we have hardware, we have tools, everything that you need in a small little village like ours. Here at the general store, we offer service. So you as the customer 
You don't have to do the shopping. We do all the work for you. If you want coffee, I'll measure it out for you. I'll grind it for you and package it for you. All you have to do is carry it home. The shelves are stacked right to the ceiling with everything that we have to offer. And if I can't reach, I use the ladder to climb up top. Another tool I could use to take things from the high shelf would be the grabbers. We didn't have plastic bags like we do today. Everything had to be wrapped in brown paper and string and you could tuck it away into your shopping basket or shopping bag and take it home. Our general store has the post office, so if you didn't get home delivery, you could come here and pick up your mail or uh, send out a letter. And if you had a post box, you could just come in and, and pick up your mail that way as well. Of course, the first thing that children want to see when they come into the store are the candies. And uh, they love to look, they love to think about how many candies they can buy for a penny. And in those days, a penny would buy a lot of candies. Come down and visit us again at the Burnaby Village Museum. To find out what else is happening in the Burnaby Village Museum, you can go to the city's website, burnaby.ca. Now, there's always something happening around Metro Vancouver. And today on the Express, we're shining our spotlight on local arts and culture. Celebrate the Year of the Rabbit at International Village. It's one of the largest Chinese New Year celebrations in Vancouver. The event will offer a variety of multicultural performances, arts and crafts, and delicious ethnic dishes. Strut your stuff and audition to be a model for the University of the Fraser Valley's designer fashion show. You'll showcase the creative styles of the next up-and-coming fashion designers. This popular performance, Fräulein Maria, is a rollicking good time, a contemporary dance history lesson, and an astonishing piece of choreography all rolled into one. And of course, Sweater Lodge Unlatched runs until May 1st here at the Museum of Vancouver. We're going to leave you with another look at the local art scene. This is Relay, presented by The Kulch. I'm Johanna Ward, and on behalf of all of us on The Express, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.